Hi, and welcome to Run Tall with Tim. I'm Tim. Thanks for being here. I always appreciate the time that you and I get to spend together, so thanks for tuning in. And I hope wherever you are that you're happy, healthy, and staying safe. On today's video, I'm comparing two new trail offerings from Hoka. It's the Speed Goat 5 versus the Tecton X. Now, both of these trail shoes are good options for you, but they have a lot more differences than they do have things in common. So how do you know which one to buy? Well, that's the question that we're gonna to try to answer today, so be sure to stick around. But before I get into it too far, I always like to demonstrate what it looks like to run in the shoes I'm about to review for you. So let's do that, but then when we come back together, I'm gonna to take a real close look at the Hoka Speed Goat 5 versus the Tecton X to try to answer that all important question, which shoe is right for you? If you're new to the channel, welcome to the Run Tall family. I'm really glad you're here and you found us on YouTube. Now, I post running shoe reviews, comparisons, and shoe battles weekly, but I also like to post other videos related to running as well. So if you enjoy watching running shoe reviews and other videos about running, be sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll be notified each time that I upload new content. So let's start with the cost. Now, I did purchase both of these shoes with my own money. The Speed Goat 5 is the less expensive of the two options, and they retail for $155 US dollars, while the Tecton X goes for $200 US dollars. Now, I did order both of these shoes true to size, and they fit me perfectly. The Speed Goat 5 is the heavier of the two options. For a US men's size 9, which is what I wear, they came in at 9.8 ounces or 277 grams on my scale. The Tecton X is noticeably lighter. They came in an ounce lighter on my scales at 8.9 ounces or 251 grams. So let's start. We'll take a look at the midsole first, beginning with the Speed Goat 5. Now here they have full length EVA foam in the midsole from the heel all the way to the toe. They've got a spring measurement, which is how Hoka reports their midsole material now, of 35 millimeters in the heel and 21 millimeters up in the forefoot of the shoe. And they feature a four millimeter offset from the heel to the toe with a late stage meta rocker. Now this is quite a bit different than the Hoka Tecton X. So let's take a look at that next. Now here they have two different densities of foam. They have a softer layer that you're landing on. Now that's our ProFly X midsole material. And then they have a more firm uh, foam underneath that. And then embedded between those two foams are some carbon fiber plates. They're, they run independently of one another. So it's not one thick continuous plate, but rather two. They give you more of a suspension type of a feeling. And again, they're not attached to one another. They have a spring measurement of 36 millimeters in heel and 26 millimeters in a forefoot. They have an early stage meta rocker with a five millimeter offset from the heel to the toe. So lots and lots of differences just in the midsole uh, construction between the Hoka uh, Spiegel 5 and the Tecton X. Clearly, the Tecton X is built more for speed. You know, they have a more aggressive rocker and they have more of a spring measurement, some more of that pop. And with those carbon fiber plates, it does give you a little extra something as you're moving through your gait. I particularly like these on the harder uh, packed dirt types of trails because that's when I really notice it, especially if you're able to get more up toward the midfoot, which is sometimes hard to do when you're out trail running. Now with the Speed Goat 5, highly cushioned shoes for uh, trail running. I think you can really go a long ways in those and be really comfortable, but they have a four millimeter offset, so it's not nearly as aggressive. And they have that late stage meta rocker, so they're not necessarily pushing you to go faster forward, but rather to give you a more cushioned, comfortable ride when you're out on the trails. Now, I think these two shoes work really well together, almost in tandem. One to be, that you can use to log just a lot of miles in to prepare for maybe a race. And then the Tecton X is light enough that you can use it as a trail racer. Now, I did take these out on a half marathon trail uh, race earlier this summer, and I really enjoyed it. They did really well. Um, very impressed overall with the performance of the Tecton X. 
And I've got about 65 miles right now in the Speed Goat 5s, and I've got about 69 miles in the Tecton X. I do plan to take these over 100 miles for sure. I did promise to do that in an earlier video. And who knows, I might be running in them for my long run tomorrow, depending on what shoe shows up today. I've been expecting the Alpha Fly 2, so the updated version to the Alpha Fly. If they arrive today like they're supposed to, I'm gonna take those out and give those a try out at my local, um, probably around town, and maybe do a little bit of work on the track. But if they don't show up, then I'm going to be running in the Tecton X out at my state park. Now, you can always follow along with me on Strava because all my workouts get posted instantly there. So I'll put a link in the description below to my uh, Strava profile. And I invite you all to join me as I post updates on my marathon training and as I prepare for Detroit. It would be awesome to have you show up there as well and just share your experiences. Whether you're training for a marathon or you just enjoy running, I always love to hear about what you guys are up to. So let's flip these over and we'll take a look at the outsole. Now in both cases, now this is the Speed Goat 5, they're using the uh, Vibram Mega Grip and you can see that it is covered from the heel all the way to the toe and the lugs are pretty deep. They're five millimeter lugs and they have this little extra something alongside the, the lugs there that help you also dig in, especially if you're into some loose gravel. But I think they did a really good job just covering the bottom of these. I they shouldn't have any kind of uh, issues about durability at all with the Hoka Speed Goat 5. Now with the Tecton X, they did uh, scale back a little bit with that Vibra Mega Grip, but they still feature the same type of uh, material that they're using on the outsole. Uh, so let's take a look at those. And here you can see that not as much, and the lugs aren't nearly as deep. They're uh, four millimeters deep here. And you can see that they've got quite a bit of exposed uh, uh, foam here in the mid section of the shoe. But, you know, again, they're trying to keep this shoe as light as possible, so it's as quick as possible. It's, it is at least in my opinion, being marketed as a trail race shoe. And, you know, I think, it, like I said before, I think it does a really good job of that. You know, I didn't have any issues in either shoe feeling like I was slipping around at all on the trails. Now, I don't run on super technical trails. It's a lot of hard-packed dirt uh, uh, that I'm running on. So some loose gravel, you know, some forced trails. I do have a little bit of uh, vertical you know, gain and um, descent as well, but not, I wouldn't say it's extreme. It's certainly not real tall, uh, but it is fairly steep at times. And I always felt safe with both of the outsoles on these. So yeah, and I think they both do a decent job in transitioning from road to trail. Although I do think that the uh, Tecton X does a little better job of that because when you get on that hard pack dirt or even if you're out on a hard surface like pavement uh, for the trail race that I ran uh, you know, a little while ago, we started out running on pavement. You get a, a lot of that pop uh, off the toe because you got that late or early stage meta rocker and you got those carbon fiber plates in here. Uh, lug size a little bit less, you know, not quite as deep. You know, it just felt really good, you know, on the harder surfaces. So I do think that they did a good job with the Tecton X design. But again, both of them are good road to trail shoes. That Vibram Mega Grip can get a little sticky at times on the pavement for both of the shoes, but I found it was just a little bit less maybe in the Tecton X than what I found in the Speed Goat 5. So let's take a look at the upper and beginning with the Speed Goat 5. Here they have a double layered jacquard mesh upper. And because it's double layered, you know, it does run a little bit warmer than maybe I would like it to. But then again, on the upside, you know, it is somewhat water resistant and probably more importantly for a trail shoe, it does allow the water to be able to wick away should your feet get wet. And you can see that, you know, they've got this uh, toe cap around the um, end here to protect you in case you were to kick some stones. It's not, you know, it's not going to provide a ton of protection, but it is at least something in case you were to stick, you know, kick a stone or a root or something along those lines. And uh, talking about that and talking about protection, this does not feature a rock plate, neither shoe does. And then as we continue to look around, you can see they don't have a whole lot else going on here. They do have their Hoka logo uh, located in the back. And then they do have the stretch panel up in the toe box. And I did feel like I had plenty of room to display my toes. I felt pretty comfortable that way. So let's take a look at the Tecton X and see how that upper stacks up. Now they feature a jacquard engineered mesh upper, but it's not a double layer jacquard mesh. So they do feel a little bit more breathable, maybe a little lighter underfoot. The material itself is a bit more coarse to the touch, while the Spiegel 5 felt a little more cloth-like. I did feel like I got some water resistance when I was wearing these, because I did have to run through some a uh, little bit of mud, a little bit of water here and there, but my feet never got wet. So 
I do think there's some water resistance. May not be uh, waterproof, but at least it did a good job for the amount of water that I was running through. And they too have this tow cap or band around the tow box. And that's just to give you a little extra protection, much like they did in the Speed Goat 5. They got nothing really going on on the midsection of the shoe, really not until you get all the way back in the heel counter where they too have the Hoka logo back there. And then up in the tow box, Still felt like I had plenty of room to display my toes. It felt like it's really comfortable. They do have this stretch band here at the start of the eyelet chain, and we're going to talk more about that here in just a second. And since I mentioned the eyelet chain, let's go ahead and take a look at that, it's beginning with the Speed Goat 5. Now here they have a very traditional eyelet system going on here for their lace enclosure. I found it, although it's simple, no big wow factor. It doesn't need to be. It does a really good job. I always felt locked in and secure all the way across the midfoot section of the shoe. And then as I mentioned, uh, when I was talking about this, the uh, Tecton X, they have this stretch panel down in the toe box. And you can see that the Speed Goat 5 also features that same stretch band to give you maybe a little bit more accommodation should you have a wider foot. But I found in both cases the shoes to be really comfortable. And again, got locked in secure across the midfoot section, which is the sole purpose of the eyelet chain. So now let's take a look at the Tecton X. Now here's, a, it's a little bit different here. Not exactly sure why they did this. So with the Tecton X, they added an extra eyelet, so they, you can see just how far down they come on the on the upper here. And although they have this uh, stretch panel here in the toe box, uh, it's not nearly as big as what we just saw in the Speedgoat 5, and that's in part because it's taken up with this lace with the lace enclosure system. Now they start out with a traditional eyelet chain, and then they go to a pass-through system. But again, they have seven eyelets, so I'm not exactly sure why they did that, but in didn't really make much difference, I guess, overall, because I still felt locked in and secure all the way across the midfoot section of the shoe. Didn't have any heel slippage in either shoe. So, again, did a good job. I just think it's maybe just a little bit strange. It, just, it even looks a little strange to me at times. <laughs> just lots of laces. Now, the tongue on each of these shoes is pretty much the same. They're both very thin, lightly padded, but they have just enough padding. I think Hoka got it right in each the you know each shoe, both the Speedgoat 5 and the Tecton X, because you don't really need a ton of padding there. All it really needs to do for me is to keep me from feeling or having any kind of discomfort from the laces across the midfoot, and they both did that. So let's take a look at the padding around the heel collar and the tab of these. And again, about the same in terms of the amount of padding that they have. It's a very traditional style where it rests mostly up around the collar and the tab of the shoe. The biggest difference here is the Spiegel 5 features an Achilles heel flare. Now that can feel good, especially if you're going downhill and you're putting some stress back on your Achilles. I found it to be really comfortable. At times, I did get a little bit of debris that might kick up here and somehow work its way down into my shoe. So that's the one downside to maybe this Achilles heel flare. It almost acts like a funnel to bring in debris at times. Didn't happen a lot, but it did happen, and it's worth mentioning. But you can use the Achilles heel flare to help you get your shoes on. Now, they did away with that with, this, with the uh, Tecton X. They don't have the Achilles heel flare there. Uh, but they do have just about the same amount of padding as I mentioned. I do kind of like this more traditional style here on a trail shoe. Now, maybe the Achilles heel flare works good on other maybe road shoes where you don't, you're not out uh, on such loose gravel and you don't have the opportunity to pick up as much debris. So I do appreciate with the Tecton X that they went to a more traditional heel counter. But again, the padding is pretty much the same you know across both shoes and in each shoe i felt like you know there was a nice heel pocket for my heel to set in so lastly let's just take a look and since i got the tecton x in my uh, hands right now i'll put it on my shoulder give it the pinch test back here and you can see that it's you know it's somewhat pliable but there is some resistance there but again you know, I, I didn't have any issues with any kind of heel slippage. So I'm going to do the same thing with the Speed Goat 5 and see how that uh, see how that heel counter is. And as I put it up on my shoulder and give it that pinch test, you know, they're pretty equivalent. There's really not a big difference there. So I feel, you know, for me, I think they did a good job here in each case. So, you know, no complaints. So overall, I think Hoka did a really good job with both versions of these shoes. The Speedgoat 5 saw some pretty good updates over the Speedgoat 4 with a lighter, softer, 
more responsive midsole that's just kind of fun to run in. And then with the Tecton X, of course, this is new uh, to us as a race shoe, but those carbon fiber plates, you know, they're independent of one another. So you get lots of pop, but you don't have any kind of instability when you're out on the trails. And they're quick, they're lightweight, and they're, they're fun to run in, especially when you can get to maybe a spot on that trail or if you have to run on pavement for a short period of time where you've got harder surfaces to run on, you can really get the benefit of those carbon fiber plates and pop you forward and give you just that little extra boost when you want it or need it or you're looking for it. So for me, if I was having to decide between these two shoes, you know, not everybody's gonna agree with me on this, but I personally would spend the extra money and buy the Tecton X because I think it's a little bit more versatile. I had a ton of fun racing in it. It's lightweight. It's not as cushioned. It's not as cushioned as the Speed Goat 5. So if cushion is what you're looking for, get the Speed Goat 5. I think you're really gonna love it. But if you want something that's, you know, not quite as cushioned, but it's faster, lighter, maybe a little cooler underfoot than the Textile X is the way to go. And right now, that's my favorite of the two. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it for you. As always, run tall, run strong, be kind to one another. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on Run Tall with Tim. Can't find the time.